I think I have a few jokes. Yeah. Have a few jokes. I have one or two. Are you your joke? You, oh, okay, okay. Well, I don't know if they'll be that funny. But this is what you guys do. To make, to make me feel good, just laugh really hard, okay? Whether it's funny or not, just laugh really hard, okay? So when people see us, they say, oh, my gosh, they're having so much fun, all right? All right, here, here's the first one. What car did the wise man drive to see Jesus? A Honda Accord. The Bible says the wise men were all on one accord, right? Honda Accord. All right, well, let me try. Let me try. I got one more. I got one more. So that one wasn't really a hit. Okay, I got another one. Maybe, maybe, let me, I'll cross that off my list. Okay. Um, what kind of person was Boaz before he got married? Ruthless. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. All right, good. So, you guys are too kind. You guys are too kind. I'll pay you all a little bit later, okay? It's good. All right, so like I said, my name is Patrick Riley, and this workshop is uh, Holy Habits, how spiritual disciplines fuel our holiness, our holiness. So if we would, I think it's good to start in prayer. We started with little jokes and a little bit of laughter, which I think is good, uh, but we'll go into prayer, and then we'll go into these slides and um, get going. Let us pray. Dear Father, Thank you for laughter, Lord. Um, thank you for the senses that you have given us, Lord. Thank you for our minds and our hearts, Lord. We want to be more like you. So, Lord, help us to be more like you, Lord. Uh, provide the means and the ways. Speak to us in ways that we can hear you and understand. I pray that we are available to you when you are speaking to us, Lord. Um, just be with us in our time. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Did that thing change? Okay. All right, all right, all right. So this is our presentation overview. We'll go over a few things. We'll talk about who I am. We'll talk about um, how sometimes our tank is on E. I'll, I'll define what is a habit, what's a holy habit, some biblical examples. We'll get practical with it. I'll give you some tips to persist. persist. And then I have a question about your habits and some guaranteed results, and then we'll have a space for questions. Uh, for questions, let me say this. I am totally interruptible. I am totally interruptible, which means that if I'm up here talking and you guys have a question in that moment based off something I said, please ask it. I know we have a designated time for questions, but I want you guys to ask your questions in the moment, because if you're anything like me, sometimes you'll forget your question. You could write it down, but it may not fit in the mode if somebody asked their question before you or whatever the case may be. And I'll do my best to call on you guys as you ask those questions. Deal? All right, cool. Did it change? All right, cool. All right, so here's a little bit about me. My name is Patrick Riley. I'm a pastor or resident at Macedonia Baptist Church. Uh, basically, what that means is I'm a pastor in training. So my pastor that I'm under, he's been pastoring the same church for 23 years come May. Um, and he has a lot of wisdom. Um, and a lot of things in here in Kansas City and across this nation. And we had an organization called Made to Flourish, which is basically a pastor's network that teaches pastors how to, about faith, work, and economics and how that fits into the gospel. And I am one of the products of the first res residency at Macedonia Baptist Church. So it's a three-year residency. I have been doing it since uh, 2017. So this year in October will be the end of my residency. Uh, I'm not sure what God has next for me, but I have enjoyed the residency quite a bit. Um, so I have done everything that a pastor does. I was telling uh, Heath earlier, the only thing that I have not done is um, weddings because I'm not ordained, and then uh, communion. I have not done uh, Lord's Supper or communion at my church, but everything else I have participated in. I put a scripture up there because I, I like to think that this is one of my life scripture. Uh, it is 1 Peter 4, 8, above all, love each other deeply because love because love covers a multitude of sins. Um, one of the one of the scriptures that I really love. So, running on empty Sunday to Sunday, uh, it's safe to say that most Christians view worship as an event instead of a lifestyle. But our hour or two hours of corporate worship isn't supposed to replace our everyday lives as worship of worship. Sunday morning should launch us into a week of worship. Worship is a lifestyle; it is not an event. 
We are to be filled with the Holy Spirit and have a heart full of worship for our great God and King. Not only that, but each and every person in here, you are called to be holy. You are called to be holy. As a matter of fact, point to yourself and say, I am called to be holy. Amen. The Hebrew word for holy is Kodesh. You didn't think you were learning Hebrew today, right? So Kodesh. Uh, and it means apartness, set apartness, separateness, sacredness. And I would like to add that it also means it also should be otherness or transcendent or totally other because God is totally above his creation and his creatures, uh, including us. Holy has the idea of heaviness and weight of glory. The word applies to God because God himself is totally other, separate, sacred, sacred transcendent, reverent and set apart from every created thing. So God calls us to be holy. He says that you must be holy. So God doesn't tell us that he is wanting us to be holy or that we can make ourselves holy. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. First Peter 1 15 through 16. So the question becomes, how can we be holy since we are wicked to the core? Is this even possible? Yes. Yes, it is possible. And I'll tell you how. If you are sitting here and you have repented and trusted in Christ, then it is you of whom they speak of in Revelation 7, 14, where John writes, they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. And with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot, you can be made holy and acceptable to God. So basically, we are holy because of our relationship with Jesus Christ. The way that God sees us, he sees us in righteousness because of Jesus Christ. Now, don't fall asleep because I'm getting to why this is important. But I have to tell us why, what it means to be holy. What it means to be holy. Because sometimes Christians use what I like to call Christianese, Christianese or church jargon or words that a lot of people really don't know. And you say things like holy, but what does that really mean? So I'm not assuming that you guys don't know what holy is, but I'm just trying to help you out to get a deeper understanding and how these can fuel our holiness. So what I have just established is now that believers, um, so now that as believers in the work of Jesus Christ, we are holy. And we are called to be holy like he is holy, but we are sinful. As a matter of fact, in the garden, when sin entered this world, it affected every single thing. Every single thing. There is not one thing that sin did not affect. Matter of fact, sin has affected us so much, even in our minds, that we forget that we forget. We forget that we forget. We forget that we are forgetful, and that is a result of sin, a noetic effect of sin. So, and because we are sinful, things doesn't go as smoothly as we would like. So today, I want you guys to picture your holiness as a car. Picture your holiness as a car. And for me, I was thinking about this, and I said, well, if my car, if my holiness could be a car, what type of car would it be? And I said, well, a Tesla sounds nice. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with a Tesla. And I don't know what you guys' car may be, but picture your holiness as a car. And just as a car, we must, be, we must be like a car to pull up to a filling station to receive a full tank of gas. Once we are full, uh, filled up, do you park, once you fill your car up, do you park your vehicle and sit it there for the rest of the week? No. It's pointless. Full tank of gas and sit it there and do nothing? We go to the filling station because to, to get what we need to leave the station. We have a destination. And we need a full tank to get there. But here's the problem with filling your car up and then leaving a station. And this is the problem with us as Christians when we go to Sunday worship and we worship and we're filled with the Holy Spirit and we want to go out and achieve great things and move mountains. Here's the problem that happens when we leave that Sunday worship. As soon as we walk out of our Sunday worship, we begin to burn up the fuel. We begin to burn up the fuel. 
And it could be a plethora of things. It can be based on relationships or it can be inner turmoil. It can be family problems. It could be for those who have jobs, work situations. There are so many things that burn up that fuel when we leave church. So we are full of God's presence and glory from our time in corporate worship. And I believe it's a trick of Satan and the job of Satan to steal that fuel that we have just gotten in Sunday worship. And I want to say something. As I move on, the worst thing that you and I can do is to wait till next Sunday to worship God again. We need to drink continually to stay fueled. So how does that happen? How does that happen? How do you stay fueled? Your habits. So what is a habit? Um, I put up two definitions, and they're both kind of the same, but I think I, I, I tend to like the definition of any regular repeated behavior that requires little or no thought and is learned rather than innate. Rather than innate. The other definition I put up is a settled or regular tendency or practice, especially one that is hard to give up. So your habits are the ways that you drink continuously to stay filled. But we have to define what those habits are because there has to be something to describe your habits because you have good habits, you have bad habits. Those are type of adverbs, I'm sorry, adjectives to describe a habit. But quick question, trivia, daily double, if you will. Anybody watch Jeopardy? No? Okay. It's a daily double question. Here it is. Um, how long does it take to form a habit? How long does it take to form a habit? So A says 21 days, B says 45 days, and C says 66 days. Really quick, I'll give you 10 seconds to think about it. A, B, or C? So if you say A, raise your hand. A's? A's? What about B's? Any B's? Okay. Any C's? Anybody C? C, 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 C? If you said C, you are correct. See, we have learned that 21 days, and we've been taught that 21 days is how you form a habit, but actually, it takes a lot longer. On average, it takes about 66 days to form a habit. So if it takes 66 days, think about the habits that you guys have and how you have tried to break them and have maybe been impatient with them. It takes time. Don't give up. So a holy habit. What is a holy habit? Holy habits are better known as spiritual disciplines, but they are spiritual practice or discipline or a rhythm. I love that. A rhythm of life that a believer embraces to help him or her meaningfully connect with the life of God. And I think it's important to talk about rhythm because our life is on a cadence, right? God has put us life on a cadence and sometimes the cadence gets good and it keeps beating and it keeps beating and it's good. We have a good rhythm and we get used to that rhythm and then something happens and the rhythm changes. And now we're saying, what do we do? What do we do? Our habits have changed. God I have just gotten used to that rhythm that you have. What do I do? That is when you practice your spiritual disciplines. That is when you say, you know what? I have to eat with someone. Well, I eat with a lot of people, but it's different because if you understand how eating together in the Bible is, then you would take eating with someone a lot seriously. See, Jesus was condemned for eating with what? Sinners, tax collectors, prostitutes. Why was it so bad for him to eat with these people? When you share the table with someone, that's a spiritual discipline and it helps create the holiness because it breaks down barriers between you and that person at a common denominator of a table. When the cadence and the rhythm changes, then you have to go to prayer, discipleship making, because God told us, Jesus told us to go and make disciples. Fellowship, because we should not forsake the assembly of gather, gathering together. Gladness and generosity, breaking bread with one another, communion, serving one another, washing someone's feet. Biblical teaching, start to read, start to study, listen to your pastor, listen to someone who teaches, and then lastly, worship. Lastly, worship. So those are the holy habits or spiritual disciplines that we have to get in, in, in the practice of doing, that we have to get in the practice, practice of doing. So really quick, I want to give you guys a biblical example of this, a biblical example of this uh, about Peter, about Peter, uh, our friend Peter. We know Peter, right? 
Peter was an apostle. Peter, uh, he, he, he called down curses. Peter sliced off a man's ear. Peter was bold. Peter was probably someone that we all want to be. I wish I had a boldness like Peter. It may be something that you have said as you read about Peter. But do you know that Peter gives us a perfect example of spiritual disciplines and holy habits when your spiritual tank is on E and then when your spiritual tank is full? So in John 21, 3, uh, I, did, I don't have it up here with me, so I'm going to read it here. John 21, 3 says, Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter Thomas, um, also known as Didymus, they Daniel from Canaan and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I am going to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and they got into the boat, but they that night they caught nothing. So, this is amazing because this is Peter's spiritual tank on E. I'll tell you why. Jesus has just died, right? Jesus has died, and what does Peter do? When Jesus died, first he denies him, correct? He, he, he mourns that, but then he goes back to fishing. He goes back to a habit that was his profession. And I believe that when we do something for so long, and even if it's our pro profession, it becomes a habit. And our habits distract us from what we are called to do. Peter was not called to be a fisher of fish. He was called to be a fisherman of men. But when Jesus died, he went back to a security or a safe place in his habit and it distracted him from what he was called to do. So Peter, spiritual tank was on E. He, didn't, he was not exercising spiritual disciplines or ha holy habits that would put him closer to the holiness with God. He went back to something that he always knew. He went back to something that was comfortable. Um, then we see Peter again. After Jesus came and he saw him and he asked Peter, do you love me more than these things? Uh, yes, I love you. Feed my sheep, tend my sheep, things like that. We read in uh, uh, John 21. I think it's very good. Then you see Peter again in Acts 1.15. And now we start to see Peter with his spiritual tank on full. He says, and in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. It was 120 of them. And he said, what he goes on to say is very powerful, but it shows that he had that boldness again. His, his spiritual tank was being full. He was practicing the spiritual disciplines of praying and eating together. He was fully submitted. And then he got to that point. And then Acts 2, 42 through 47 talks about some of the things that were as a result of him and his spiritual disciplines and his spiritual habits. For the sake of time, I want to keep moving on because I want to get to the things that are practical. We can talk about these things, but how do we make it happen? How do we make it happen? So <clears throat> you're saying, okay, I hear you, but how do I make this happen? Um, does anybody have a job in here? Anybody have a job? It's good. So you can use your time at work to increase in your spiritual disciplines. So you get a lunch break, right? By law, you are to get a lunch break. You don't get a lunch break? You don't work? You eat while you work. Okay. All right. Well, if you don't get a lunch break or you do get a lunch break, let's say you get a lunch break. Um, say your lunch break is 30 minutes. 15 of those minutes you could spend eating, and then 15 of those minutes you could spend praying, you could spend reading, you could spend listening to music to increase in your holy habits. Or social media. Anybody have a Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, whatever the case may be. <clears throat> so be intentional about the time that you spend on social media. For every 10 minutes you spend, how about you take three of those minutes to pray to God and talk to God and spend time with God? If you really want to increase in your spiritual habits and how your holy habits will fuel your holiness. We don't have to stop doing things, but we have to be intentional about how we redefine them. How we redefine them. I remember I used to work for the state. I was a caseworker um, in children's services, and we had something called protected time. And in that time, we were supposed to work on certain projects and case study, not case, case, uh, cases that we had and court documents. You should have a schedule of protected time as well. This from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. is my protected time. There is nothing that can happen that will stop this time that I have scheduled to spend time with God. That is something that you can do to increase in your holiness and your holy habits and your spiritual disciplines. If you drive to work or drive to school or ride to school, instead of listening to your music, turn the radio off. Listen to God. See what God is saying. Matter of fact, God is a chatterbox. 
God has so much to say. I, 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 I don't get it. People our age say, I just don't hear God. The question is, are you talking more and listening less? Turn down the volume of the world, the volume of whatever's going on, and measure your margin. How much time do you really have? Be realistic about it. One thing that uh, helped me out a whole lot was when I first became a believer, uh, this was this guy named Pastor Delano Sheffield. He made me track out every hour of my day for a whole week, everything I did. And I looked back and I said, man, I am ashamed of this weekly chart. I'm not praying. I'm not studying. I'm being very lazy, procrastinating. I'm watching a lot of TV. I'm working out more than anything. And I said, why am I this way? But he helped me in my spiritual disciplines and it led me to set an alarm clock because this is what I needed. And maybe you do, an alarm clock where I said every hour on the hour, I prayed. I prayed to God because that's what I needed to do at that time. So get creative. Get creative in your ways of increasing your spiritual disciplines. Get creative in the ways of increasing your holy habits. First, admit that you may have a problem and that there is a habit that's distracting you from spending time with God and increasing in your holiness and being holy. If we are to be Christ imitators, right? If we are disciples of Jesus Christ, Jesus spent time with God. He spent time with his father. He spent time in quiet time. Um, he, he, he broke bread. He prayed. He fellowshiped. He taught. He led. He forgave. These are things that we have to do as well to increase in our holiness, to increase in our holiness. So I have some tips to help you persist um, because when you start this, it will be hard or when, while you're doing this, it will be hard. It's not going to be easy. So remember this, first of all. Practice, not perfection. Practice, not perfection. And there's also some things to be aware of as well as you do this. What you listen to, I call it snacking. What are you snacking on? People tell me, I'm having troubles with this. I'm having troubles with that. Well, what are you snacking on? What are you putting into your body? What type of music are you listening to? What type of TV shows are you watching? Who are you hanging around? What are you doing that is causing these problems? So lyrics to songs become meditations. Lyrics to songs become meditations. And, and another thing is, if you start in a rush, you will always be in a rush. Those are two things to be aware of as you practice your spiritual disciplines. But first, you have to define. <clears throat> define the habit that you want to break. Define the habit that you want to tr- change. You say, I don't want to do this anymore because of this. Look at what that is. Um, really, really, really prime in or zone in on thinking specific. Be specific and drill it down to the concrete. Next, you need to identify. Identify what is triggering you to fall into that habit. What is going on? What happens before you go into that habit? And that habit is distracting you. What, what happens? Identify that trigger. The next thing you want to do is deal with it. Once you identify it, don't be afraid to deal with it head on. Deal with the problem. You have to, you have to deal with the problem and not just the symptoms of the problem. Because we want to break patterns, we have to do something about those triggers, those self. So be, be proactive in doing those things. Then we need to develop a substitute plan. Oh, I'm sorry, went too far. Um, substitute. Substitute that habit for something else. Um, and, and it's not so much about stopping, but you have to manage these things that you're doing. Be realistic. Substitute something else. For me, um, watching TV, I have started to substitute with reading, reading more. I watch the Chiefs. Anybody Chiefs fans? Woo, woo, woo. Go Chiefs. Super Bowl bow. Okay. Uh, I watch them, but during the commercials, um, sometimes, not all the time, I read a scripture. I read a scripture or something like that. And that's just me because I know... I need those extremes to help me stay within the holiness. Because if you watch a game, you see different things that could be triggers. For some people who struggle with different things, I've had people that I talk to, they say watching football games or sporting events seem to trigger something in their mind that leads them to um, some type of sexual lust. And I say, how does that happen? And they say, well, think about it. The cheerleaders, they're half-dressed. They're dancing around. They're doing all this. Their minds went to a sexual lust. So you have to be aware of that. And that person, 
took some very major extremes with that, what they were dealing with, but we should be the same way. We should be the same way. <clears throat> so with that, like I was just saying, that, that guy talked to me. I'm his accountability partner. You all need accountability partners. You all need accountability partners. Um, the Bible says, speak, uh, speak, um, talk to people who are, who are wise in the faith, who are older in the faith, more, mat more mature in the faith. I'm sorry. Couldn't think. Um, but let me define something about this accountability partner. Do not pick someone that you cannot trust. Do not pick someone that if you had a home, that you would not give them the keys to your house because they will not help you as much as you want them to help you. Accountability is about being honest, open, and transparent about something that you're dealing with. And if you're serious about increasing your holiness and the spiritual disciplines for, for God and for your life, then you have to get someone that, can tr that you can trust that won't judge you either. That won't judge you. They'll keep it honest with you, but they will not judge you or condemn you. And you have to realize that you're going to get frustrated with your accountability partner. They're going to challenge you. They should challenge you to be better, to be better. And then <clears throat> reward yourself. Reward yourself. We have a tendency to beat up on ourselves, to think of ourselves a lot worse than we really are. Take some time to reward yourself. Encourage yourself. Sometimes look in the mirror and say to yourself, you know what? There are some few things that I struggle with but I'm smart, I'm strong, I'm a child of God, I'm holy, I've been called to be set apart. You have started a great work in me, you're going to complete it. Affirm yourself, reward yourself, because this is a long life and it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And in this marathon, you will get tired. Different things will come up, so you have to reward yourself and encourage yourself and remind yourself. And then the last thing you can do is um, maybe you need some professional help. And it may not be a counselor. It may be a counselor for whatever it may be. But talk to your pastor. Talk to your parents. Talk to people who are more mature in the faith to help you with these things that you're struggling with. I, I, I pray that you all have relationships with someone who is much older and much mature that you can go to freely and talk about the challenges of this life. I did not have that growing up. And I stumbled my way through life to get to this point right now. I have a lot of regrets. I have a lot of things that I wish I did not have to experience and I have to do and I have to see. But it was because I did not have older, more mature people in the faith to help me. I did not come to something like this where someone said, hey, there are holy habits you could practice. I did not come to anything like this. I was not at a church where we went out like this. So you guys have an advantage. But I pray that you are taking advantage of it and that you're honest with yourselves and honest with whoever those people may be. So you got some practical things, some tips to persist. Um, and why? I think I, I love the title of, of this workshop is how, <clears throat> how our spiritual disciplines fuel our holiness. But I don't think we have a problem with how. There's, there's not problem, many problems with the how, but it's with the why. See, Simon Sinek did a TED Talk, and he said that basically, if you can sell the why, people will get behind it. People will get behind it. Simon Sinek, it's a TED Talk, very amazing, maybe like 18 minutes. If you guys have some time, watch it. It's very inspirational. Um, but the why you do something is what people get behind. And the why we are called to be holy is what we get behind, is what fuels us to go. How is good, but why we do it is more importantly. Why we do it is because we can have a great life down here, but it's much better when we get to heaven. I can't imagine if God removed his hand from underneath us. Where will we go? Where will we be? We will fall. Deep into the abyss, we will be dead, which means a spiritual separation from God. But why we do this is because we love this communion and this fellowship with God. We want the rewards that come to us when this life is over. We want the rewards of this life now. There are rewards in this life now. There are benefits that we have. So the question becomes, I think I already have it up there. What is your habit? <clears throat> what is your habit? What is that thing that you are holding on to? 
What is that place of comfort, of security that you go back to when times get hard, when times get tough, or you're just a little bit too anxious? And you go to that thing, that one thing that is maybe uh, distracting you from your relationship with God, that is interfering with your relationship with God. In your quiet time with God, you're saying, God, I don't want to do this anymore. What is your habit? What is that thing? And you don't have to share it with anyone. You don't have to say it out loud. And when I say I'm share, I say not right now, but with your accountability partner, of course, share with God, share with people who are more mature in the faith to help you. But what is your habit? What is that thing? And, and I see many people taking notes and they have pens, but what I have here is just a piece of paper, just a regular piece of paper. And I want to take time to do this because I think that it's very helpful. Whatever your habit is, if you would like to, you can write your habit down on this piece of paper and then you can put it through this shredder. Because what happens with our habits and when we give them over to God, when we, when we confess and we call out on Jesus' name in our habits, he shreds them up. He shreds them up. The Bible says, cast your cares upon him. Cast your cares, which means to throw them out. But when we cast, don't hold on and bring them back in. This can be symbolic of saying, you know what? I don't want to do whatever I'm doing anymore. I want to be done with that. I want to be more holy. I want to be a godly example and a testimony to other people, other people my age. I want people to look at me and say, hey, there's something different about you. What is that? And then I want to be bold like a Peter to say, it's Jesus Christ. It's who lives in me. He is the reason why I am who I am. And I'm not saying that I'm perfect. But you can be just like that. This is your conversation to someone who sees you. We are called to make disciples who go out and teach. So if you would like one of these, you're welcome to have one. I'll leave it here. You get it when you want. Rip it off. Write it down. Shredder's on. It's automatic. You put it in there. It's done for you who want to do that. But I also have a challenge for you guys. And this challenge is, um, I think, fairly easy. And, and I think it has guaranteed results. Like I said before, it takes about 66 days to form a habit, right? So if there's a habit that you want to form, your holy habit, which we all want to form, choose something to do for 66 days. Call it a 66 challenge. Maybe you want to read a chapter from each book of the Bible. 66 books, 66 days. Easy correlation, right? And it will help you in your habit of reading. Maybe you want to wake up every morning and say, you know, for 15 minutes, I just want to do nothing and listen to God. But try it for 66 days and see the results. Journal, 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 journal the results. Journal prayers that you pray to God and watch how he uh, makes them happen. Watch how he answers your prayers. I guarantee you guys, I guarantee it. But you have to get into the habit of doing those spiritual disciplines. That's the challenge. All right, any questions? Any questions? Not anything. Okay. Okay. It's all right. It's okay. So if we don't have any questions, then what we can do is we can take this time now for those who would like to. Um, I'll stand up here and I can pass out one of these sheets and you write down your habit. That thing you want to just say, ah, no more. I don't want this habit to interfere with my relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't want it to interfere with the holiness that God has called me to. I'll stand up here for those who want uh, one of these and you guys can shred them.